This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Welcome to the Jamie Glazov moment. Tonight, don't blame Islam for the terror in London. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening I just want to be a little bit helpful to leftists in terms of how to cope with the terror attack in London. And I, I know it sometimes gets a little bit difficult for leftists in terms of all the evidence they're facing about jihad. So tonight, just a few minutes of a reminder of the agenda that uh, leftists have to follow and why they have to follow it. Um, my friends, as you know, tragic attack. Uh, the last we heard, there was four dead, one police officer. Uh, this uh, jihadi, you know, plowed a whole bunch of people with his car, then he ran around with a knife and he stabbed and killed the police officer. And this happened at Westminster Bridge, uh, as well as at the UK Parliament, of course. Now, the UK media right away should be an inspiration for leftists, right off the bat. It's reporting that a quote-unquote Asian did this. And you see, this is very interesting. Whenever Muslims engage in jihadist attack and jihadist attacks, somehow Islam, jihad, them being Muslims, is never mentioned. They're just called quote-unquote Asians. So, you know, and, and, and this is the way that the left in, in the United Kingdom uh, they do this in terms of referring to people usually from Pakistan or India, but it also uh, can refer to people from the Arab world, Muslims from the Arab world, but they, they use this word Asian, and it's a camouflage, it's dust in the eyes, but it works very well uh, because it leaves many people with this idea that perhaps it's some person from China or Malaysia or maybe Vietnam, and maybe they're upset about something that has absolutely nothing to do with Islam. So to the leftists uh, in this Jamie Glazoff moment, this should be your inspiration uh, in terms of camouflaging this issue because that's the key, what you have to do because you're engaged in jihad denial. So just begin with this. Refer to the attacker as Asian and then you make it seem like all of this has something to do with China or another country in Asia somewhere. Now, jihad denial is very important and leftists, your daddy George Soros wants you very much to engage in jihad denial because this whole globalist agenda that involves the left, that involves Islamic supremacism and everything that they're doing, it needs you leftists to be very good party line disciples. Jihad denial is your crucial job. So right off the bat, you're doing this job very well, but as a reminder, when you find out that the Quran and the Hadith inspired this particular devout Muslim to do what he did, or perhaps there will be other people involved as well, other jihadis involved, immediately start using the argument that this particular individual just needed a job. And start complaining that it's poverty that caused this. And, you know, the guy just needed employment and capitalist oppression and inequality drove him to this attack. Now, when you're going to be faced with evidence, you might be saying this at a party where other leftists are agreeing with you, but there might be a conservative at this get-together that's going to drown you with the facts very quickly. He might overwhelm you. He might start telling you the reality of how the leadership of Al-Qaeda and ISIS and Boko Haram and other terrorist jihadist organizations are usually, you know, filled with westernized, wealthy, educated Muslims, that their ranks are, are filled with um, educated, rich, wealthy, westernized Muslims. So this kind of doesn't make sense in terms of how poverty causes terror, but just keep saying it anyway, because if you repeat a lie over and over again, that's what works, okay? Now, you might be cornered by the facts, so just start bringing up mental illness. Just start saying that this particular person who engaged in this terror was probably mentally ill. That really works a lot of the time, and that way you can push Islam into the boundaries of invisibility and nobody will talk about it. Very, very important last tactic, but it could also be your first, but it's the most important one. Just start talking about racism and Islamophobia. So if somebody starts talking about this attack at Westminster Bridge and at the UK Parliament and the evidence starts coming out that this is a devout Muslim that was inspired by Surah 5 and Surah 929 and Surah 47.4, just start talking about racism and Islamophobia 
and that somehow racism and Islamophobia drove this poor person to do this, okay? This is very important for you to do because as a leftist, you need to deny jihad and its roots because your main agenda, your main purpose is to be really cool and popular in your leftist milieu, to see yourself as this great social redeemer and you want to destroy our host capitalist democratic society. You want to destroy Western civilization. So you don't want to admit the evil or violence or barbarity of adversarial cultures and religions and systems and ideologies, because that's going to throw you right off. Stay focused on waging war on the West, on Western civilization, on the Judeo-Christian tradition, and everything will be fine and go according to plan. Two more quick tactics. You need to keep conflating Islam with Muslims. So, in other words, if you find out or you read that Robert Spencer, for instance, is pointing out that this particular jihadi was motivated by certain surahs in the Quran, immediately make the accusation that Robert Spencer hates all Muslims and that anybody that says anything truthful about Islam hates all Muslims. Is this a lie? Is this crazy? Of course it is. Nobody of sane mind and integrity, and these are the people all around me in the counter jihad movement at the Glazov gang, everyone that I know, including Robert Spencer, David Horowitz, Pamela Geller, Brigitte Gabriel, Nani Darwer, Steve Emerson, all these heroes and noble warriors on the counter jihad movement, all they're basically doing is telling the truth about what motivates Islamic supremacism. In no way is there any kind of hatred or dislike of all Muslim people. We're very well aware that there are many Muslims that do not follow the Quran, maybe don't know anything about the Quran, etc., etc. We're only concerned with how jihadist attacks are inspired by Quranic texts in the Hadith. But you need to conflate Islam with Muslims because you're of a totalitarian mind anyway, and you don't believe in individuals. So constantly accuse anybody that tells the truth about Islam that they hate all Muslim people. This lie is really working. Just keep saying it over and over again. Even though it's a slander and a smear against truth tellers and good people, just keep conflating Islam and Muslims and keep making and creating this slander. Also very important, Keep engaging in the racialization of Islam. Obama was working towards this. The left is working towards this 24-7, and it's working now. Whenever somebody says something truthful about Islam, you get to call them a racist. People are so afraid of being called racist that a lot of people are just going to stop telling the truth about jihad and Islam. So the last I checked, Islam was not a race, and this is very, very stupid and very, very moronic because there's white Muslims, there's Chinese Muslims, there's black Muslims, there's many Muslims of many different races, but you want to say that Islam is a race. Even though Islam is a religion slash ideology, and arguably it's more of an ideology than a religion, you want to make it a race. Because anytime somebody says something truthful about jihad and its roots in Quranic texts, you get to call them a racist, and then you win automatically in our leftist culture. All of this is very important to you as a leftist because, you see, you're building the Tower of Babel. You're building your man-made earthly paradise, okay? You're a self-appointed social redeemer, and it feels so good, and you, you get to be so cool among all your friends and in your social milieu. Now, what happened the last time when Everybody was trying to build equality uh, in these utopian experiments. When you look at Stalin, when you look at Mao, when you look at Pol Pot, yes, every time there was a utopian experiment to build heaven on earth, it led to hell. This, these utopian experiments have caused more than 100 million deaths in the 20th century. But you want to continue to try to build this utopian paradise. Because in the end, as a leftist, you don't really care about people. People can be sacrificed on the altar of ideals. And that's what makes you such a good leftist that needs to be listening and following the directions of Daddy George Soros. In his book, Intellectuals, Paul Johnson wrote about this phenomenon. And he called it the heartlessness of ideas. You need to tap into that heartlessness 
as a leftist, keep denying jihad and therefore making Western civilization more vulnerable to totalitarian aggressive ideologies slash brackets Islamic supremacism. We'll see you on the next Jamie Glazoff moment. Good night. <laughs>